adoration to him as always and I will of course should I say unfailingly pray in the language of heaven some may misunderstand some of them may try to misconstrue but one thing is certain right now in the presence of the almighty God Elohim Adonai El Shaddai in heaven the angels are singing worshiping and praising the most high with the very oldest language on the face of this very uh, evil language and that's how I'm going to pray Ezi onye wanyi na chineke na nke puru minye ni ne chupo ki kabi ama bonyanyi ne pena goja hanso yonyo banani ana achi Donye muona madi ni rubeli isi Donye banani abo kaka Upo chene ka ini ituge se bubebe ingozi Mma lite na ugugu Ndi bo uwe choge bige jonye ngam Umugi uwe bako no wani ne uwe na ozi oma nke jome ginezi ha Zina no madi den Na nke bubebe ingozi and you were asking me how when I came in one year, but you know, I'm not a part of the sauce. I'm not a dent of a full but I'm a guy. I'm not a little open so I'm not a big room baby. Me, you know, put in a gather and I'm so down and just forget to wait and I'm going can you. And you were not a cool when I got an ass in the food and can you ask not one can you never call my father maybe. Don't you want to make a man keep the big one because you went up to me. No, I'm going to go to the other way. I'm going to be up and go to the other way. I'm going to go to the other way. And you were not a guy. Na asingi ni mwana dunia ni nani kikile hanso juu ni njenga sopo ni kwenye jamani kwenye ni ni nani wewe chuo zebu tukaka ni mwana nani kifarosi obi mwenye juu na gosin sopo kwa ni nini obi yamba na IPO pitch juu ba ngoro kuno wani na yana katika kumara dendi ni juu ni toge zebu kwenye kosi sisi biko bata ni osi ni makro na nani kwenye ni nifu mwana pisi alani juu na potande na upungi kwenye ni juu ni nifu mwana namso po na ijama na asi le kwa kambi ula ni nini kaka sisi juu ba hano Hawe ita hapo ni kuni yonzo. Obode kwe si kuzu ya lopo ni yese mkwede ngozi. Anyo wane po mwe wena kwa kwa hansa. Gena sinye mwe gichyo se kwe zukage. Anyo wena jake mwe wene ito. Gena sinye mwe kere hini nekele kema nwe nekele. Nalo tuto nime na sopo ni nime. Jama ni nime. Sete ne bige. Malo ni mwe kana jogi. Ise. 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 Having handed over our proceedings to heaven. We must therefore proceed. Unfailingly and very speedily to preach this very gospel that we have been mandated to preach. Welcome my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the four to receive it. Thank you so much and remember us. Remember in this channel, we speak up about the plight of the people in the Contraption Court Nigeria. We are not preaching hate speech. We are not talking down on anybody, we are not cussing out on anybody, but we are saying it the way it is, without being politically correct. We just say the truth and nothing but the truth. That is what we do in this channel. If you are a lover of truth, you are going to love the channel. Meanwhile, as we are proceeding, I will remind you again, pray along with us when the Mass in the 150 days prayer is still going on. If you have not joined, join. It is not yet late. We are on the last phase of the prayer. Join the prayer if you have not joined. That is the only way you can hear directly from Chuko Gabiam and also know the mindset for Asun Namazi Nanikam. That will help you also to run away from false information. A lot of information that are false. People are confused. Some are going back. But when you are praying along with Asun Namazi Nanikam, I bet you, you can never go back. You can never be weak. You can never be deceived. You will always see things the way they are. That is what we are doing. As you all know, Today is a day we remember the day that our Sunni Muslim Nanakan was almost killed by the Janjaweed. They have tried before and they are still trying up to now. They will never take his life. It doesn't matter what they do, it doesn't matter what they take. Very soon, our Sunni Muslim Nanakan will regain his freedom. No man born of a woman can stop him because he is on a divine mission. A mission, an assignment that was given to him by Chuko Kadiyama, and he must accomplish the assignment. Nobody can stop him. The ginger weed are trying by all means possible to instill fear in the life of the people. To make sure that the indigenous tribe in the country of Nigeria are fearful. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. What you have to do is to protect, protect yourself. When they are talking about self-defense, self-defense. The minister of defense himself came out and said, defend yourself. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We have to defend ourselves by all means possible because that tool of fear, that instrument of fear that they are bringing, we will send it back to them. You can see what they are doing. Pushing all manner of lies in all angles. 
pushing all manner of lies. All manner of lies. They will never tackle the insecurity. Instead, they are coming against the innocent people, the people who are living peacefully in the southern part of Nigeria. There has never a time southern part of Nigeria have been known as a terrorist zone. It has never been. The place that we know to be terrorized are people who are having conflict and killing each other at all times. is in the north. And most of the time, the people they are killing and taking away their life in the north are the Christians and the southerners. Southerners who live in the north are always living at risk at every given time from the origin. They are always living at risk. There has never been any time they have been peace. That is why when you see some of them coming online to say that we are living peacefully, we have been living peacefully, we continue to live peacefully. Where have you been living peacefully in that country called Nigeria since independence? There has never been any place the, the, the ginger weed are living peacefully with anybody in that very country called, called Nigeria. But when you come on media, you see them pushing these lies that Nigerians have been living peacefully with each other, that we are on planet Earth and we are living peacefully with each other. Have you forgotten about many riots that have been happening in the north from the time memorial? Many riots that have been happening in the, in the north by the time memorial, killing the people from the southern part of Nigeria at every single riot. If any little thing happened across the world, more especially that has to do with the religion, they came, come down on them and begin to kill the, the innocent southerners. It has been happening. Not, it, didn't just start, it didn't just start in the regime of, uh, of this, very, this very imposter. It has been happening from independent date. You could see the hatred. The hatred is very, very open. There has never any time that very contemporary called Nigeria has united. If you don't know, go and watch that interview that was granted by Ahmad Bello. Look to Ahmad Bello's face. Just listen to what he was saying in that very interview. You can see hatred. 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 This was when most of us were not born. That interview was made when most of us were not born. You see the hatred in him. You see the hatred he, ha he has against the southern part of Nigeria. You see the hatred written all over him. It is still there. And somebody will come out and begin to tell me today, tell me today that Nigeria is united. That someone is trying to destabilize Nigeria. Nigeria has been peaceful. Peaceful where? Where has there been any peace? Where has there been any peace? The only place that looks like peaceful, that very accommodative in the southern part of Nigeria, it is only the southern part of Nigeria that has always been accommodative. But what is happening today is that the government of the Janja will have decided to destroy that southern part of Nigeria also, to push in the Boko Haram that they have recruited into military to go and begin to kill innocent people, more especially in the southwest and the southeast. The southeast, to be precise, they have sent their military to kill innocent people for doing nothing. Not because they were committing banditry, not because they were kidnapping people, not because they are doing anything wrong, but because they are asking for self-determination, which is enshrined in the Janja with law. In the law of the land, self-determination is there. Because these people are asking for self-determination, using only flag, raising their flag, that this is what they want. They want referendum. They are being killed. Be mowed down. On different occasions, they are being killed. You see cops everywhere. It has become a routine that people, the press never report it. They can never, they never ever report it. The information you get about these killings are from the social media. Are you talking about abduction? Abduction is happening every blessed day. Even as we speak, they are still abducting people. They are using the governors who are supposed to protect the people. Governors who are from the southeastern region, who are Igbos, using them to kill their own people, abduct their own people, and send them exile. They come on national television to threaten their own people without minding. Come to boast that they have invited a jet fighter to bomb their own people. This is where we find ourselves. And this cannot stop until we get Biafra. That is why every Biafran should see a reason why you should speak up with your own platform. You should see a reason why you should stop being a coward. Use your platform to speak about the plight of your people. Educate people and wake people up of what is happening. We don't have any representation in that very contemporary called Nigeria. We'll be better off if we are on our own. We'll be better off if we have a place we can call a home. Having Biafra nation doesn't mean that Biafrans cannot strive elsewhere. Biafrans can still exist anyway, including inside the danger if they choose to. They can do their business anywhere they want to do them. But we want to have a home where we will retire to. A home where we will run to when somebody is chasing us. But as of now, we have no home. That is where we have to speak up and ask for Biafra. If you have not started asking, Ask, speak up, 
use your platform. Do everything possible. If you are doing already, double your effort because we are getting to the end of the road. The captivity of our Sweet Amazon Nadekano in the DSS should make you double your effort. Because Mazin Nadekano have given us every strategy. He has laid out a foundation that we should all follow. Follow that foundation and we will get Biafra. It is not time to draw back. It is time to act on every lesson that we have learned from our Sweet Amazon Nadekano. Because he is coming back. We have to hold this banner up so that he will come out and be proud of us. It is not time to quarrel. It is not time to look at your shoulder. It is not time to look at your brother and talk against your brother. It is not time to look at who is Sabotua and who is not a Sabotua. Our focus is actualization of Biafra. Fighting for the freedom of Biafra and freedom of Sweden and the Khan. Speaking in one voice, in unity. We are united in this cause. It doesn't matter the propaganda they push out there. It doesn't matter what they Keep your ears close to propaganda and false information. The target is Biafra. You can see people doing marvelous work. Look at our brother Simon Epa, who is doing a great job. Simon Epa have come on his platform even to make a challenge to the federal government. Telling them what to do as they are trying to stop the seat at home by force, crying of economy or no economy. Telling them they, they should release our Sweden Amazon and the Kano from DSS and send him to the normal place, which is the correctional center. Take him to the correctional center and see if the if if the if the if the sit at home will continue. He made a challenge that if the city at home continues, he will stop fighting for Biafra. That if the city at home continues, he will stop fighting for Biafra. Here it directly from him when he spoke. Every worker, every worker in Biafra land have dressed up. Everybody is going to work. This is a very big challenge, Joe. But will they take it? They will not. <laughs> Let us see. The challenge has been thrown open. I want everybody to share this particular challenge. Post it. Let it go viral. Tag the presidency. Tag the DO, uh, the DSS. Tag the governors. Tag government of officials. Tag all of them. Tell them that Simon Epa have thrown this challenge. That if Mazen Abdikano is transferred from DSS to Correctional Center between now and Friday, the 17th, and next Monday, if the CC is at home, I will put Biafra. Thank you. See you. That is the confidence that Biafra have. Every Biafra know what we want, they know what we need. Do exactly what we want, and you will see changes happen. Our brother Simon never has thrown the challenge. Follow up. Send that was in the We are not talking of release now because everything is process by process. We are not talking of release. Take him to the correctional center where he's supposed to be and see if the seat at home will not change. But as long as you keep your ears dumb and never want to listen, it will get worse. It will get worse and worse and worse. It doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what we do, it will get worse. There is nothing on planet Earth that will stop the coming of Biafra. It doesn't matter your propaganda, it doesn't matter all you pushing forward. We are gonna overcome you. We are going to overcome you. The political set in the southeastern part of Nigeria are devil, devil incarnate, wicked souls who do not care about their own people. You can see the north, not standing with their own, protecting their own, standing with their own and fighting along with their own. But in the southeastern part of Nigeria, what do they do? They kill their own people. They kill their own people and try to make sure that their people do not have any voice. But in the northern part of Nigeria, what do you see? You see their politicians and their elite making kids for the bandits, making kids for the Boko Haram, rehabilitating Boko Haram, even against the will of the people. Even when people are speaking of that, why must you do this? Why must you do this? Which is not right to do. Still, they are fighting hard to do it. People are speaking of, we don't, why should you re, why should you rehabilitate a terrorist that have killed people? Not just rehabilitating, you put them into the military, put them into the police, put them into the town to live with normal people. As if nothing was done without any punishment whatsoever even while the war is still going on people are speaking up against it and yet the elites who are sponsoring this very evil in the north are still bent on doing what they want to do but in the south is what do you see they come against their own people watch the video of the annoyance of the people over the rehabilitation and what this very gentle government is doing watch allow people who have destroyed kill you know brutalized communities you did not heal that wound now you want to pamper those who have perpetrated that ill of 
criminality and atrocities. It doesn't work that way. If you want to do amnesty, you first have to rehabilitate the communities that have suffered against the activities, the atrocities of those who have, you know, uh, brought misery to their, to their communities. Then you can then think on, you know, um, perhaps having a program that will, you know, um, deal with people who genuinely surrender. A lot of communities are not, you know, welcoming those people that the government say they have, you know, um, de-radicalized them. Because many communities are, are still not happy. And if you really want, if you are serious, you first have to reconcile, have to, you know, uh, rehabilitate, has to provide, you know, uh, life to those communities that have been destroyed, to those people that have been killed, that have been, you know, their loved ones being killed, you know, their loved ones being wounded as a result of the activities of these criminal gangs. So any attempt to now say that you have granted amnesty or you are even treating them in a very preferential way, you are actually giving incentives for another round of people to go and engage in those kind of violence activities. Because these are, you know, intentional merchants of violence who are orchestrating violence against the innocent Nigerians. So you cannot begin to talk about amnesty for these high profile sponsors of criminal activities. They must face the law. Otherwise, if there's no deterrent, you are actually going to, you know, encourage more of such kind of, you know, impunity and abuses of rights of Nigerians. Even with all this that people are saying, yet they are bent on reintegrating these people, on doing what they want. They don't care what everybody say. Benue State have shouted and cried and said all manner of things. Benue State Governor have been speaking up time and time again calling them by their name when they are a terrorist government, a terrorist group, Niyeti Allah, stakeholder in the government of the Janjaweed. How can such a country function? How can you be part of that kind of a country? A country that have embraced a terrorist organization, make them part of themselves. We say it, people think it's just a... It is, we are not just the ones saying it. People are saying it, even on national television, this is what is happening. That Miet Allah is a terrorist organization. Hear from Benue people what they have to say. With all this information available, yet the government is bent on doing what they want to do because it is their people. It is about the Fulanese, not about the indigenous tribe in Nigeria. It is about bringing Fulanese from all parts of the world and setting them in Nigeria. That is the agenda. And they are pushing that agenda by all means possible. Ask me, what agenda is the Southeastern governors and senators pursuing for the Southern, Southern, Southeastern people? What agenda do the Southerners, Southern politicians have for their own people? What agenda? None whatsoever. More especially in the Southeast, they have no agenda for us whatsoever. You see them when they were talking about uh, uh, Igbo presidency. All of a sudden, they do no longer know what how to do about it. They are not even speaking about it again. They, they dare not mention it anymore. They are now talking about their own political party. They are now talking about their political party and the will of their political party. That is how used they are. That is how useless they are. They never speak the voice of the masses. They are only dancing to the tune of the Janjaweed because we never elected them. They were being elected by Sokoto Caliphate. And they are playing the role of the Sokoto Caliphate in all aspects of their doings. Each time they speak, they speak for the Sokoto Caliphate. Each time they act, they act on their own behalf. They never speak up for the masses. That is why somebody like Dave Omahi will come out on national television and begin to say that he prayed that we have another president like the late Muhammad Buhari. God will also give us the next president who has good hearts, like uh, President Buhari, for the good of this country. We need uh, God's own anointing, our anointed uh, president, for the interest and unity of this country. Who in his right senses will say that? Who in his right senses will say that he wants a president, another president like the president, the late president Muhammad Buhari? Who in his right senses will say that? What has Muhammad Buhari offered to that very contraption called Nigeria? Nothing whatsoever. It has been Nigeria giving him, giving him, and giving him, and he ended up destroying the contraption. The man he's praying for them to have a devil is somebody who doesn't even have. A, a, a Waek's resort 
Omahi is praying that Nigeria will have another president that doesn't have Wayek result. That is the prayer he's making. That they should have another president that will not have Wayek result. He's praying that they should have another sick president that will die in the seats. He is praying that they should have another president that will be very nepotistic. He is praying that they will have another president that will come and marginalize people more than ever. That is what the desire of somebody who called himself a governor in Igbo land, a governor in southeastern region. That is what he's begging for. He is saying it on national television without fear or favor. He doesn't even care. This is where we find ourselves. And people are still watching, thinking that it's going to be well. It can never be well. The only thing that will save the situation is a breakup of the very contraption. Then you begin to see same people. If you don't break it up, more mad people are going to be unleashed upon the innocent masses. Watch the idiot what he was saying. David Why? God will also give us the next president who has good hearts, like uh, President Buhari, for the good of this country. We need uh, God's own anointing our anointed uh, president for the interest and unity of this country. These hearts men are Nigerians. The government has the same duty that they owe these businessmen in Lagos, in Market, in Alaba, in uh, Onitsha, in, uh, in Kano, wherever. They owe that duty to the herdsman too because he's a Nigerian. And these provisions are from public funds. Nowhere in the Nigerian constitution that I have, that I read almost every day like my Quran, there is nowhere that is actually in any office. There is talk of federal character. That is the constitution. Abi, where, who, who tells the, the section of the constitution says that the parties must zone their position for, for, for presidential elections during uh, uh, general elections? Who has seen that section? I want to be educated. This is where we find ourselves. These are politicians, the way they talk. You see the other one, a politician trying to compare the business of trade with, with, with traders, compare past traders, legitimate traders in the southern part of Nigeria. He's trying to compare them to, 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 to headers. Trying to compare them to headers. A senator, somebody called a senator, trying to compare headers to people who are doing their businesses. What comparison does these two have? People who are doing their redistribute trade, they raise the money. If you do not know, go and interview the Igbos, how they succeed. They go to serve their master. After serving their master for so many years, that same master can come and settle them. Give them their freedom. They begin to strive on their own. They will go and look for a shop. Pay for the rental of the shop. They will go and buy their own goods. Nobody pays the rental for them. Nobody gives them goods free of charge. Nobody gives them the environment where they're going to trade free of charge. This is how trade is being done in the southern part of Nigeria. But this man is telling us that we must have to give, give the, 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 the headers a land by force. Not just give them a land, we have to build a ranch for them. After building a ranch for them, we will now keep them the right. In the ranch again, we will have to buy cows and give them and be paying them on daily basis. This is what a senator is making me to believe. And you want to be part of this very madness. A Southern and we still stand and call him or herself a, a one Nigerian is. You must be mad. And it is only when you go to your grave where you wake up. That is the only thing that I can believe. That you want to go to your grave before you can wake up. We can never be part of this madness anymore. We are going out. Biafra friends are already out on their own way. They don't want to do anything to do with this very madness. They will never be part of it anymore. They will never be part of it. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It doesn't matter how you try to treat it. We cannot be part of this madness anymore. We are going our separate ways, going our own way to do what is right. Mechuko Kukabia, my guide and protector of Sunday, who has done a great job and laid a strong foundation. We will follow that foundation to the last and we will get our victory very, very soon. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra will come. Biafra will be celebrated. And we will all rejoice for what Chuku Gabiam will have given us. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, bye-bye. See you again on the next video.